Welcome everyone, this is Zon with Repo Products. Today's screencast video is on an introduction to Autodesk format and the um, graphical user interface. So when you work with Autodesk Format and Format 360, these applications are applications that allow you to preform pre geometry, very much like Google SketchUp, but better in the sense that they are creating additional content besides its own native content. It creates uh, Revit content as well, so you can bring it directly into Revit. You can start the program by just installing Format for Windows, or you can go to app.format.autodesk.com. And this is the interface that we see. You will want to log into your Autodesk account to use all the functionality. And so if I go over here in the upper right hand corner, I have a little icon for a user account. And I can click in here and I can go ahead and log into my Autodesk account. Now that I've done so, it will check my Autodesk account to verify if I have the standard Autodesk format application credentials and or the pro version as well. The pro version gives us additional features. So if you click this little icon right here, you'll see it'll give you the ability to install and work with Format for Windows, to do collaborative sharing, to do uh, material content library, inputting and exporting out, uh, additional solar energy analysis, and as well as energy analysis. In the upper left hand corner is your icon for the format, and again the Autodesk logos for all of the applications are based off of origami design. You have three little bars right here that if you click that gets you into a contextual menu that gives you the ability to create a new sketch or open a sketch or save or save as. You can also import or export the data as well and look at the content off your A360 drive. Now if I click open sketch I can actually open a file from the A360 online drive or locally. So if I click from A360 drive It'll ask if I want to save or discard any changes I've made to the existing file. I'll continue to discard those. And you'll get your sketch gallery. This window will display all of the files that you have that you're working with. And you can pick the one that you want. You can specify via date modified or name. So I'll just open up an existing one that I'm working with for a presentation. Depending on your web connection, this may take a second or two to upload, uh, to download and display the content. Now that you have it in front of you, navigation is pretty straightforward. You can zoom in and out with your wheel, very much like any of the other Autodesk applications. You can hold the shift key and move your mouse. Press down and hold the mouse wheel and move your mouse and it will rotate uh, very much into 3D orbit axis. And in the top toolbar, you'll see the name of the file that you're working with. You'll see an undo and a redo. You'll see selection um, and filter command, which is this little arrowhead here. You can do some basic measuring checking here. You have tools to help you draw. So you can create sketches that are linear sketches, line, arc, arc off of a center, spline, a rectangle, and a circle. You have the ability to bring in uh, standard shapes such as cubes, domes, pyramids, cylinders, and roofs. You can also go to the next command which gives us advanced modeling tools such as joining up two objects or more objects together, cutting them, doing a sweep, doing a cover, uh, doing a loft, offsetting, um, shelling out, and then also uh, working with filleting the edges. You have this additional command here for groups, so you can create a group, you can modify a group, you can edit the group, you can make unique. In other words, if an object is part of a group, you can rip it out of that group and make it unique. Uh, you can ungroup an object, you can also ungroup everything, and then you can ungroup the model itself. You have buttons here for sun and shadow, so if I click this, it will give you a little toolbar that allows you to adjust via a slider the date and the time, and this will affect the display of the shadows, and that will help you get a very quick understanding of how your building is oriented based upon the position uh, and the sun location. You can also click solar analysis right here, 
and this will give you the ability to start analyzing it based upon your again your date and your monthly peak and so on you can configure this if you need to or you can hit the green check mark to finish this aspect of the software this button here is settings and if I click this it will get into how the software functions as a whole for example snapping to a grid system displaying editable dimensions and so on you can also have two additional commands here this one controls the location of the project so if you click this it will automatically open up Google Maps weather satellite location and you can type in the address of where you want your project to be and it will actually switch over to that location and you can set the location or you can import the satellite image and set the location when you're done uh, I'm going to back out of this and head over to the next command here which is it says 19.1 which refers to energy analysis and so you can use it to work with Autodesk Insight and you can use it to generate an Insight 360 energy model and look at the content on your Insight uh, website and start to look at costs and things like that. I'll cover that aspect in a different set of videos. On the right hand side you have commands as well. You have properties, you have materials, so each time you click one of the icons over here it'll tell you what you have and it will switch to that palette. So you have layers, you have scenes which are camera still um, locations that you've created, you have visual styles, you have levels, you have your content library, and sharing capability. You also have standard navigation toolbar commands here for looking at this in a top view or looking at it in a 3D view using a fly through mode where if I start that and I can use my mouse and move and it kind of navigates this way. You can use the keyboard commands for WASD to move around and if you're not used to it, it just takes them some time to get used to. You have orbiting, you have free orbiting, you have panning, zooming, and so on. Now if we look under properties, if you do not have any objects selected, it will give you the property of the information of the project itself. So it will give you the location, the gross square footage, and any flow area ratios if you're working with that. If however you have something selected, it will give you the property information of that object that you have selected. If I tab each time I hit tab it will cycle through what it can find and see and it will highlight that content and if I left click right now you'll see it picks the entire geometry and it tells me what is that object and it gives me the, the data the property data of that object you can hit escape twice to get out of selection of the object and if I switch over to materials you're going to see a list of all the materials that are in the project already and these image uh, materials you can just click and physically touch an entity and it will apply it to that entity. So for example I can see as I move my mouse and click a surface it will apply it to that surface. Now you can also add material as well and you can click edit material to add materials. We'll cover this in a different video. You can also import materials as well coming from the standard library. And again I'll cover uh, the materials a little bit further in another video. There are layers as well, so when you're creating the content, you can actually assign the content to layers. That way you can turn on or off certain objects if you need to. Okay, And you know it's pretty simple. So let's say for example I, for the sake of it, turn off the existing building and turn off new conceptual mass. And if I click this check mark to turn off conceptual mass, it should turn that off. Now what that basically means from what I can see here is that there's content that I've created and it hasn't been assigned to that particular layer so if I grab everything I can go over to the properties of that object I can see that data and again heading over to layers I can set it to a particular layer that I want say new conceptual mass and it will switch everything to that layer now if I put a check mark for new conceptual mass that material and all the content 
in that layer should appear or, or disappear. So it's just a good way of organizing the content as well. You have camera scenes, which is similar to just doing a, a camera still shot uh, of a perspective view. So you can click anyone that you want, and it will jump to that view, as, so, as you can see here. Or you can just click Play Scenes, and it will cycle through all of the scenes that you want. OK, and you can click Stop. This icon here that looks like a pair of glasses, sunglasses, is visual styles. So you can turn things on and off and switch the visual mode of it. Say, for example, monotone surfaces, uh, ambient shadows, and so on. And even shadows, turning them on or off. You have additional features in here, such as ed showing or displaying edges. And for example, if I want to see the hidden edges, I can click this and I can see through the objects. You have the ability to display the grid and the ground plane and the axis, the north arrow, and the levels. And then the mechanics of how visual styles function. You have layers as well. So you can create additional layers. And you can rename or renumber them if you need to as well. You have the content library. So here you can specify linking a library to a local library or to the A360 library. So if I click to the A360 library, it'll drill into my A360 drive account and it will find any files that it can use as, or libraries. I can click browse and now you can see I have uh, some folders that I set up earlier and I can go into say for example furniture and look at beds and I can see I have a whole bunch and I can just drag and drop and put it in. Now when you place them obviously you have to adjust the scale of them but we'll cover the functionality of the commands later. And then lastly you can set up a collaborative session or you can invite other people via email and they can visually see what you are doing and you know it, that's how it functions. Lastly, you've got this little icon up here for information as to getting understanding of what's new in Format, the help, support, blogs, galleries, and you name it. If you want to get out of the file that you're in, all you need to do is just um, open up a new sketch open up an existing sketch or start a new sketch and as long as you've saved your content the file will close okay so if I click new sketch it'll ask if I want to continue and discard I can click cancel and hit save and then go on or just cl click continue and discard so for now I'm going to click continue and discard and the window that pops up says what's the name of your new um, format file and you have to give it a name click OK and you'll get a brand new palette uh, and that's it. That's a good introduction to the graphical user interface of uh, Autodesk Format 360. Thank you very much for watching.